into the same notation. No way home. I think showed up the method notation. Scope. So evaluation is easy, it's successful approximation, the new value function is obtained by plugging in. In Paula's situation, uh, you given the last value function approximation, you update your policy, and you solve Poisson's equation, you iterate. And this was um, this was um, successful approximation, that's new Rapson. And in terms of convergence. You use coupling as before, you know. It's just a lot harder. So the reason I went through and I went with an explanation of the coupling approach for the uncontrolled case. So when you don't have a control, if, if it's a C of X and your transition matrix is just uncontrolled, we call that value iteration. Mm -hmm. So for an uncontrolled model, you just don't have a minimum, right? We, did, we went through that. And I, gave, I used a coupling argument to prove convergence. Now the same coupling argument works for the controlled case. It's just a lot more involved. And so you can find references here, but I, I just don't want to waste your time. It's not, there are no new concepts. So I refuse to do proof of the new concepts. Um, but, but, the, but we've seen that you can, you can get the stability bounds. So I said this before, but let me say it again. So if V0, Again, it's, it's going to be non-negative. Always going to initialize to the non-negative value function because I'm, I'm assuming my cost functions are non-negative throughout. Um, cost function I get by using the policy fee. You know, remember from last lecture. So this is the transition matrix I get with this stationary policy, and that's the cost function. Okay, anyway, that's my notation. So once I have a stationary mark of once I have a stationary policy, I end up with a cost function, it's just a function of state, and transition matrix it's just a regular transition matrix. Okay, so um, if, 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 so you have a non-negative guy in there, then Tighter way of saying what I said before, and that if I look at that, I get I get I get an inequality like this for each m, but I'm just defining what I mean by by the bound. Yeah. So this this holds for all m. For, for the nth policy, the nth the nth value function gives me a bound that I like. Um, this is after all just v n plus one. Because 
the, the ant policy is written for minimizing. at the nth stage is this, and a v n is the Lapinov function for the nth policy. Um, and uh, it's these upper bounds that are decreasing. So these, these guys are decreasing, that's what I'm saying. All right. So you can't you don't, you don't get that the policies are improving, they don't. You, know, you might get that the fifth policy is much worse, but eventually it's going to converge to the, the optimal policy uh, under very, very general conditions. I mean, you need conditions. And if you want conditions, you know, they're, they're in the notes, but I, I won't go through here. Um, and so that's, and the proof is, is exactly what we did in the deterministic case. Now, what about here? Um, you know, stick to the countable state space case and all of that. assumption put in the notes that uh, C of X U is, is um, lower bounded by function you know, C lower bar of X, which blows up, you know, which is coercive, it blows up. And, um, and, um, blah, 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 blah. and that, let's assume that we can solve this Poisson equation, which requires assumptions, assume that um, we have this extra irreducibility. So assume Network models that will typically be the origin. That there's a probability that no arrivals come for the next hundred years, and so your policy will eventually drain out the system. You know, that's, that's what it is. Any decent policy will do that. Um, what you get from this is, first of all, really importantly, I forgot to say it in these notes. Under these assumptions, you'll find that any solution to Poisson's equation can be assumed to be non negative. Okay? That's something we haven't proved. Fairly deep, you know. So I've left this out of the course. You know, um, proving this requires requires a bit of muscle, which we're, we're going to leave out. Uh, that's important because in order to get performance bounds, here's what you do. I'd like to get something similar. I mean, here I can see that the upper bounds. So, so. Remember the notation I called C, so P sub N, I called it C N, and, um, and so forth. And P sub P sub N, the notation I used before was P N. You know, what I'm saying here is that I've got my Poisson inequality for each N. And obviously, C is not negative, P N is not negative, so P N and plus 1 is not negative. And so this implies a performance bound, and the performance bound to decrease. Here, the A to Ns are the average cost, and I'd love to show they're decreasing. Now, there's a mistake in my notes. I forgot to say this, that in order to be able to say anything, I'd have to assume H is the negative, which it is true. Now, how do I get bounds like this? Well, let's have some fun with this. Let's 
Okay, myself. Let me check my notes. I don't want to make a mistake with this. It's a very similar. It's a very cute argument to get a balance of performance. Here we go. So I've got this. Okay. So with these things out of the way, coercive cost, irreducibility. I've got these non-negative uh, value functions. Uh, let's look at this over here. the cost for the particular policy, the n plus 1 policy. This is the transition you make, you, matrix you get with the n plus 1 policy. Well, that's less than if I take the minimum of all possible policies. But that, um, I mean, greater than, wait a second, equal to, equal to, shit, sorry, excuse my language. Oh no, there's a typo. What am I doing? Stop everyone, just don't look, don't look. <laughs> Don't look, sometimes it's hard to concentrate. Excuse me, I'm taking this. I meant to put an N there. My N plus one policy is the argument over all U of this for then HN. All I've done is I've plugged in, but this is this. Now, the minimum is less than something. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. The minimum for all U is less than plugging in particular U. And I just got myself totally confused. Okay. HN, HN. Yes, this is, a, this is a fact. We all agree. Okay. This is the same as this. It should have been hn of x, hn of x. I'm just rewriting this down. If anybody see something wrong, tell me now. <laughs> now, a minimum is less than plugging in any particular thing. And what will I plug in? Let's think. Well, if I plugged in u to be the last policy, I'd have a p and hn. PNH is something useful. Okay, to go from here to here, instead of taking the minimum of all U, I plug in a particular U, which is U equals CN of X, the last policy. Now, but this is where we've, we've got Poisson equation holding for each n. So this is equal to h n plus uh, eight n. Okay. Right. So the last, you know, highlight this. Get out your green pen. The last. Um, solution, uh, the last the value function we got, the last iteration, so this is a Lyapunov function for the n plus 1 iteration. That's the idea. And so it's crucial that we have positivity. So the fact that we have a non negative uh, hn of x, and the fact that this plus on inequality holds, now allows us to use a comparison theorem.
And so it says that, you know, you know this, I'm just rewriting what we have here, I hope. Yes? So I shouldn't use green. So for the n plus 1 mark of chain, its performance has to be less than this bound. theorem, you know, is, is about, about uh, bounding averages like that. So it's just obtained by iterating this equation. And um, uh, basically it says that this is, this is my eta n plus 1 bar. I'll put that in quotes. And the way that we've looked at these, these Poisson inequalities, this is what I would have called eta n plus 1 bar. Poisson's inequality says that pH is less than the H minus C plus some constant. In this case, the constant turns out to be the last average cost. And so that's why we get n plus 1 is less than the So the actual average cost is increasing. And this is what allows you to inductively show that you can solve Poisson's inequality at each iteration. Because you, know, you do need to have some irreducibility to use this theory. But once you have this coerciveness condition, what you find is that this implies our you know, celebrated V3. And under V3, we know we have these arguments to say that there is a solution to Poisson's equation. With a little bit more work, you can show that it's not negative. We didn't do that. And so you can, you can show that it's not That's it. Yes. Questions? I thought this would take me 20 minutes, which 25. Just those damn titles. All right. I'll tell them. All right. So, um, what I want to do just in, in the rest of today's lecture, next lecture, is just go through all this in the linear case. And my intention isn't to put you all to sleep, but you all can't leave this course without really knowing the Riccati equation. And value duration and policy duration do take on a Interesting form in the linear case. But, you know, hopefully, it'll clarify. Um, I'm not going to go through all the horrible algebra. I mean, it's just so tedious. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just this, there's nothing conceptual. But before I do this, I want to answer a question of yours. So, in the, in the exam, in the homework, all over the place, you guys are taking something for granted. One second. That implies what? So what's this equation called? PH. Ah. Just testing. <laughs> this would be a Fishy equation, a Poisson's equation. You know, although I don't want to call it that yet. But what does this imply? What do you know? Uh, you could quote a theorem. This implies. Uh, the, the average cost is bounded by bound. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I used a different symbol, not an eta, you know? <laughs> because it can be strict. You know, it can be strict. And so you've got to be careful. So a lot of you, you know, like in the homework and in the exam, just took it for granted that if this equation holds, then it's a quality here. And that's not true. If you've asked me that, 
few times. And now I think I, I really should have done some very beginning. So let me just give a quick example of why you can do this. You know. Now for finite state space, it's a wall. Really what you need is the H to have a, a value. You know, this isn't necessary, but it's sufficient. So if the function H has a finite moment of the state of the distribution, then it's true. You know? And the reason is that I can multiply pi by both sides of the equation. Pi is a row vector, just whack it through. <laughs> and we know that pi p equals pi. These guys cancel out. Yeah. So you are taking the modulus, h is already positive. Oh, I don't need to take the modulus, that's right. So are you, are you assuming extra irreducibility for all this? No, well, I'm, I'm saying that if the, the uh, oh yeah, that's a good point. So, uh, it, uh, for, yeah, that's right. Under for, well, for any invariant distribution, so. but we don't have an invariant yeah, distribution right. yet. Yeah, you're right. I mean, so I mean, uh, absolutely. For, so, so I'll put I'll put that I'll, I'll knock that out for now. You know, <laughs> but, but the point is, that for any state distribution, you, you would get it, and for finite state space, that's all you have to check. Right? And anyway, that that's the idea. So, but the thing is that for you know countable state space, you could have infinity on both sides. You can't cancel. And here's an example. So, the thing that we call an eta, which is pi of c, is strictly less than gamma. Uh, and the simplest Markov chain in the world, the mm one cube. what this is, and as I go through this, you'll, you'll remember as I go along, but uh, the m1 q is what I'm going to take. Uh, my function is going to be rho to the minus x, where rho, remember, is the ratio between the rival rate and the service rate. Okay. So remember, the m1 q, at each stage, only one thing happens. Either there's an arrival, one, one arrival, or there's one departure. And uh, so rather than go through and define the transition probability, let's just look at, at pH. 